LeBron recently made comments about his MVP awards and maybe the lack of MVP awards that he has, saying, I should have more than four, but I don't, and I don't sit around crying about it. Also saying that winning one this year would be very meaningful, which is very contradictory to what Anthony Davis said like a week or two previous to this. I know that man does not care about MVP awards, he just cares about championships. But that's besides the point, regardless of how you feel about this quote, I think it's quite frankly bullshit for LeBron to suggest he just doesn't care about MVP awards or he doesn't whine about them because he did that in a press conference not too long ago. Regardless of that, I want to talk about the actual statement that he believes he deserves more than four. LeBron's comments sparked a debate about whether or not he has been robbed of an MVP award, and in particular, it was more a conversation around the last eight years, of course. There's plenty to say about 2011, I just will say that LeBron himself, at least at the time, said that Derrick Rose deserved that MVP over him, so I'm not going to talk about that one. So, from the 2014 MVP all the way to the 2020 MVP, has LeBron James not gotten an award that he deserved? Let's talk about it. Before I continue on with this video, about half of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed, so if you fall into that 50%, then subscribe. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second and it makes a massive difference. So let me set a criteria at the very start here just so we understand like what is generally required to be met in order for a player to win MVP. Your team pretty much always has to be a top three seed in the conference, unless you're Russell Westbrook. So that's a big factor. You have to be the best player on said team and it really can't be up for debate. You have to put up pretty ridiculous numbers and then of course you have to have a narrative playing in your favor. Now I'm going to eliminate that last factor because that's the main argument from LeBron fans is that the narrative has been against LeBron and that's why he only has four MVP awards. So that factor is completely disregarded here. So when comparing MVPs from 2014 to 2020, I'm gonna look at pretty much purely stats, their wins, and then if there is a difference in wins, I'm gonna be looking at the factors of help to determine who did more with less, and if that should be a factor, because that is also very often a thing. So with that, let's just jump into it. Starting with the 2014 MVP. Kevin Durant put up 32 points, which was a league high, seven rebounds and 5.5 assists on basically 50, 40, 90 shooting with a 63% true shooting percentage. The Thunder won 59 games, which was the second best record in the league, but there were also a two C just like the Heat, where LeBron averaged 27, seven and six on 65% true shooting. Durant had the better numbers by a slim margin. It's not a huge margin, but he also had a better record, less help as Russell Westbrook, I believe missed about 30 games that year. And he did this in a tougher conference. And if you watch Durant that year, it was pretty clear that he was the best player in the regular season. So, I think it's pretty ludicrous to suggest that LeBron deserved the 2014 MVP, and I don't think most people do. 2015, Steph Curry leads the Warriors to 67 wins, averaging 24 points, 4 and 8 assists on 64% true shooting. Meanwhile, LeBron averaged 25, 6 and 7 on 58% true shooting, while the Cavs won 14 less games in an easier conference. So I really don't think LeBron has an argument for MVP here. Like his team won considerably less games. His numbers really were not more impressive than Steph's. Like a few more rebounds and that's about it on worse efficiency. I'm giving that MVP to Steph every time. 2016, let's not waste our time. Like even LeBron fans are not insane enough to suggest that anyone deserved this MVP besides for Steph that year. Maybe some will argue it shouldn't have been unanimous, but at that point we're just splitting hairs because regardless, Steph Curry was the rightful 2016 MVP. No question about it. No one should disagree with that. 2017 is an interesting year MVP wise because I actually agree that the person who won it shouldn't have won it over somebody else, but that somebody else is not LeBron James. 
Of course, Russell Westbrook averaged 31, 11, and 10 on 55% true shooting. The Thunder won 46 games, and that was just the sixth seed in the West. Meanwhile, LeBron averaged 26, 9, and 9 on 62% true shooting, and the Cavs win 51 games and are the second seed in the East. But LeBron also had a much better roster, and I would say the stats don't compare. So I'm definitely giving this MVP even over LeBron to Russell Westbrook. Now, the actual MVP should have been James Harden, who averaged 28, 8, and 11 on 61% true shooting, leading the Rockets to 53 wins. He had the best numbers between these three, the best record, and the second worst situation roster-wise. So, I don't understand why James Harden did not win this MVP, other than the fact that he averaged two less rebounds than Russell Westbrook, but was way more efficient. If we're talking about narrative MVPs, I think Russell Westbrook's is probably the biggest narrative MVP ever because the Kevin Durant leaving factor and then just the pure fact that he averaged a triple-double was what won him this award, rather than the criteria that has typically been applied to winning the MVP award. Call that hating if you want, but if the situations were reversed, if Russ was putting up those numbers and he led his team to the two seed, then without a doubt in my mind, he is the MVP. But I think it should have been James Harden. I don't think it should have been LeBron, so... Th there's that. 2018 was the MVP that finally went to James Harden after years and years of coming in second place. Harden averaged 35 and 9 on 62% true shooting with the Rockets winning 65 games. LeBron averaged 28 9 and 9 on 62% true shooting with the Cavs winning just 50 games, which was just the fourth seed in the conference. Now, I will say for LeBron's case that this was a major carry job on his part. This was the worst roster that he's had thus far in this MVP conversation post 2013. But 15 more wins and I would say a little bit better numbers, I'm still giving this MVP to Harden. That being said, I do think this was the closest one out of all of these thus far. This is definitely the biggest case that LeBron has, but being the four seed in the conference is also like a big no-no for winning this award. Even if 50 games is relatively solid, it's also not extraordinary. Of course, that roster itself was so poor that LeBron getting them to 50 wins was impressive, but even when you are in that unfortunate circumstance, I don't think you should win an MVP unless you really pull them to a top tier seed, and I apply that standard pretty much across the board. 2019 is another year that we can skip with LeBron missing almost 30 games this year and Giannis doing what he did, the Lakers not making the playoffs. There is really not a single person that is arguing LeBron MVP. Of course, there were earlier in that season when the Lakers were like the four seed for a good chunk of the year, but once he got hurt, the Lakers roster tank. You, you can't win MVP missing 25 or so games. You just can't. Then finally in 2020, Giannis averaged is 30, 13, and 5.6 assists on 61% true shooting. The Bucks win a league best 56 wins, which was on pace for 63 wins with their win percentage, but then like the season got shut down and there were less games. Also, they were on pace for 70 wins before the bubble happened, and they were just not at all ready for that situation. I think they lost almost all of their games in the last eight regular season games of the bubble. But regardless, uh, this was a very good team. That's the point. But then also, Giannis was Defensive Player of the Year, so you got to factor that in as well. Like, he's bringing in defense at that level. That contributes even more to his MVP case. LeBron averages 25, 8, and 10 on 58% true shooting, winning 52 games, which also would have been roughly 60 wins if there was a full season played based on their win percentage. So, only like a three or so win difference, although it could have been like a 10 or so win difference without the bubble situation, but regardless, it's it's not really that big of a difference. But looking at it, Giannis averages five more points, five more rebounds, and five less assists on 3% on 3% better efficiency with a better record on a worse roster while playing defensive player of the year level defense. Like, Giannis's second guy was Chris Middleton, LeBron's was Anthony freaking Davis. So yeah, Giannis deserved that award more than LeBron. 
uh, and it was annoying me all of that season when people were suggesting otherwise. Like Giannis won that award as he should have, and then LeBron bitched about it. But no, Giannis was better statistically. His team was better. And that gets you the award. That's just how it goes. So has LeBron been robbed of any MVP awards? I would say no. And this is not some hating on LeBron thing. I'm actually almost always approving of who wins the MVP award. Like, in my time as a fan, only one, the 2017 MVP, has gone against who I thought it should have gone to. And when I look back in the past, pretty much every NBA MVP, I would say, yeah, they should have won that award. But that is really just based on the precedent of the award, which is what I stated at the intro of this video. You have to be putting up really good numbers on one of the best teams in the league. And when you're comparing your MVP chances to the guy who actually won it, are your numbers better or did you win more games? If the answer is no to both, which it was for LeBron in almost all of these circumstances, then you're not going to win those awards. That's just how it is. And I think the reason why, I don't think LeBron, but I think just his fans in general feel this way about the award is that they get this impression that the MVP is the best player in the league award, which it's not. It never has been. If that was the case, yeah, LeBron deserves like, what, 11 MVP awards? Like ever since 2010, he has pretty much been the clear-cut best player in the league but that's not how the award works if that was the case Michael Jordan would have 10 MVPs this is just simply how not, not how it works so with the precedent set of the MVP award LeBron has four MVPs and that's pretty much exactly how many he should have granted I didn't talk about the years previous there was a year where he lost it to Steve Nash but I think Dirk should have won it over Steve Nash before LeBron should have won it over him so I wouldn't even argue that year 2011 Derrick Rose I think fully he deserved that MVP over LeBron and even LeBron thought that at least at the time so think LeBron has four MVPs and that's what he should have and as for his MVP case this year the way he's been coasting uh, in a lot of these games that I've been watching especially the ones without Anthony Davis I'm not really sure that he's trying all that hard to win it so uh, I'm not really seeing that case either uh, but anyways that was the video uh, shout out to Rudy for editing this video. That is the end of this video. I just said video three times in a row, in a row, in a row, in a row. Like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and cue the outro music.